Hi there, welcome back to JD Answers. Today I'll be going over the Yervalax 12 inch rear view mirror dash cam. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back. First, let's go ahead and go over what's in the box. Now, this dash cam is a 1920 by 1080 Full HD. It has a Sony IMX335 sensor. It also comes with WDR technology and it has a six glass lens as well. And believe this is the long cable. So this is going to be for the rear view camera. And it is very thick. This is a very heavy duty camera uh, cable here. And you do have the red cable to which you will put to your backup light, which makes your camera a backup camera. And when it has the grid lines and so forth, so help you back up. And this is going to be the inside camera. And it, also, it has a 3, 3M mounting tab and it also has an extra one in there. So this is always this is always good. It's always good to have an extra. This one looks like it's the, actually the rear view camera. Let's see here. Oh, this is pretty pretty hard there. This is a metal one. Which you here we go. We have the cable, and this one has two connections, and it has a Type C connection here. Let me get that up there. You can see. There you go. One's going to be for the front camera and we'll see what the next one's going to be. We're going to keep on looking and see what we can match these up with because this, this is going to be your connection to your rear view camera. This is the GPS unit. Again, the 3M mounting tabs. Here we go. Here we go. Look, we also got the mounting brackets, which uh, the bands, which I'll show you how this goes in just a minute. But this is going to be the power cable. Then you got some hardware where if you want to use this for guiding your cables. Well, we don't use this because all the cables we have will always be hidden. Manual for this gives you an installation. It gives you some specifications on this. What it is, just a basic manual here. Then you got this here, this little tool to help you with the installation. But if you bought the additional brackets, this is what you're gonna get. So this is pretty neat that it provides you the tools that you need so you don't have to guess or go finding them. It's all right here. And with this, you also got, cause this is gonna go over the holder. You also got the mounting, the 3M mounting pad for this as well. Look at this real quick. Here is, oh, okay, these are all the hardware for this. Which explains the, the uh, screwdrivers for each one. And this is, for the hardware, you got the screwdriver as well for it. If you want more information on the unboxing, I have a video and I'll link it right up here for you. Now, compared to the desk, I'm sorry, the rear view mirror I had in my car previously, when you compare them both, you can see that there is a big difference. You can see that the Yervalax is wider than my rear view mirror I had before. And if you compare them side by side, you can see that it's actually longer too as well. So this is an overall longer than my rear view mirror that I had in my car, that it came with my car. I have a, a Nissan Maxima, that's what I have. So this one's replacing it. Now you can replace it with taking off the whole rear view mirror and putting in a new one using the mount. Now the mount is a separate charge, but it's a few bucks. So I, I went ahead and sprang for it. And you can see how this one is going to replace the whole view mirror. So this is easier. So when I want to adjust it, it's pretty easy like that. All right, now there's also another way you could do that is without the mount, you get your rear view mirror and this one goes simply in front of it with some straps. Which these are the straps you put around there and they go around the rear view mirror on the back side. And then in the front side, you'll have the rear view mirror here, which then this one is gonna take the place. It's just simply wrapped around 
this dash cam here. What I like about this rear view mirror is that it's beveled edges at the corners because you're using this as your rear view mirror. So you get more coverage from your dash cam or actually your rear view mirror. So this is gonna come out more. You get more picture with this one. Now what I also like about this, it's also a 1920 by 1080p resolution. So you get a good quality picture off of this one. Now the front and back camera also has a dual Sony lens. It also has the Sony IMX3335 sensor with WDR technology, which WDR technology is also known as wide dynamic range. This improves the camera's ability to capture details clearly in daytime and in nighttime. So the overall, either in the daytime or nighttime, when you get those bright sunny lights or the bright lights from the street lights or the car in front of you, it balances all that out. So I like that about this. There's several different ways to view your image on this rear view mirror. Okay, now you could have this showing the back camera, which is the rear camera, but which this is what it is for, a rear view mirror. Now you could also show the image of your front camera. And you could also have a split screen. That's all up to you. Now, this does come with voice commands. It comes with seven different voice commands. With the voice commands, you could put turn off screen, turn on screen, show front camera, show rear camera, turn audio on, turn audio off. Also take a photo. With all these commands, when you're viewing th this as your rear view mirror, again, because it's showing the rear camera, you can say show front camera and it'll show you the front camera, the image that it's recording. And then when you're done viewing what you needed to view, you say show rear camera and it goes back. You didn't have to touch anything on, on, the, on the screen here, even though this is a uh, touch screen. So all you need to do is just say those commands. What's also great about this is that it will show the voice commands on your rear view mirror when you hit your settings button or just tap this uh, screen and it'll show you the voice commands. So that's a very helpful tip. Another great feature about this dash cam is that when you need to adjust the screen, say for, for instance, you're reversing and you need more angle on the bottom. So when you make sure you got the curb, you don't hit the curb or you hit the fence behind you or whatever it is. And you can just simply put your finger on the screen and it will adjust the image going up or down to get you more coverage where you need it. Now you can do it left or right, but given the opportunity just to go up and down without moving your, your rear view mirror and then adjusting it back, it does it all for you just by doing this. Now your Relax also gave you a 32 gigabyte micro SD card for your rear view mirror. Now you can use up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card, which I recommend you upgrading. The more space you have on your micro SD card to record, the more files you have. Even though you have loop recording, you may have a lot of lock files depending on how you drive. Now with the larger space, you have more room to record the lock files. You have more room to record your loop recording, your regular files, and also if you take photos. So I recommend upgrading that micro SD card. What's great about this dash cam in the menu, you can also see how much space you have recorded for your loop recordings, for your lock files, and for your, your pictures. It will show you a graph of how much space you have to compare to how much you actually recorded. So that is a good feature on this dash cam. Now again, you're using this as your rear view mirror. But when you back up, it is your backup camera in which it will adjust the lens down and so that way when you're backing up you have more area to see and again even though you have this as your backup camera you still can adjust it to go lower or higher wherever you need it so again 
another great feature. Now with the backup camera, it will have your grid lines, which it usually has. Now these grid lines, you can adjust to what you need. Now say when you first get your dash cam, go ahead and what I do is I back up towards my garage and I see a reference and I, I, I go to the, the green, the yellow, to the red. When I start getting to the red, I get off the car and I see how much room I have. So I know how much the distance I have to the garage or wherever I'm backing up to in the, in the future. Then with these grid lines that you can adjust, you can adjust them going up or down to what you need. And what's great about this camera is you can adjust them outward or inward too to get you the right uh, distance you need from your, your point of reference when you're backing up. Depending where you install your front camera or your rear camera, you could actually flip the image where your left side is showing on your right side of the screen or your right side is shown on your left side screen and vice versa. This is also for the rear or front camera, whichever one. So it does that. For whatever you have a need for that or depending on your installation, you can flip the image rather than you trying to adjust the actual uh, camera and turn it upside down or flipping it a certain way. You don't have to do that. Just put the, the uh, cameras where you want it and then you go into the menu and you could adjust that. Now for the rear camera, if you, uh, if you install it upside down because, you, because of the area you need to install it, that's all the room you have, then you install it there. But then the image is upside down. However, with this dash cam, go into the menu and you could flip that image as well. Where now you were upside down, the image you were, you were viewing, it's actually right side up. So again, another great feature that your Relax has put into this dash cam. Now, when going through this menu, I was trying to see what features it has. And there was something called miles per hour reminder. I didn't know what it did, so I set it on 40 miles per hour. Forgot about it. When I was driving, I heard this beep, beep, beep. I'm like, what is that? And I looked at my miles per hour, and I'm like, oh my God, that's right. I put the miles per hour reminder. So when the car senses you're going over that 40 miles per hour mark, and it was right on cue. As soon as my, my speedometer went to that 40 miles per hour, it started beeping at 41, not actually 40, and it started beeping over that amount. So then I set it to 60 miles per hour when I was on the highway. I'm like, okay. But then the highway is 70 miles per hour, so I was driving, and I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's starting to go out again. But again, this is very annoying sound. After a while, you're like, okay, you hear it. But then after a while, you're like, oh, this is very annoying. So this is a great feature to have on. So say you have kids or you have a business where you don't want your drivers to go over a certain mile per hour, it'll put that reminder on like, hey, can't do that, you're going too fast. And then you lower your speed and the sound goes away. So this was actually a great feature. I, I like this one. So this is something different. And this was neat. This dash cam also comes with GPS. So this GPS, again, you, you know, on your uh, dash cam, okay, or your rear view mirror as you're viewing, and on the side, it's gonna have a, a compass, which is pretty much telling you you're going north, south, east, or west. And it's also gonna tell you how many miles per hour you're driving, which will be on the screen. Now with this, you could also take this off in the menu. So you can have it on or off. That's pretty much your preference. Now with that GPS, you could also download the car DVR software and you could track your driving. So you get a file that you have already downloaded and then you view that file in that software and it could track this exactly where you started and where you ended up and it'll show you on, on that software. Now the dash cam also comes with loop recording, which I stated earlier. Now loop recording, what, what that does, it automatically deletes the oldest video recorded so you don't have to delete anything. So once your card gets full, it goes with the loop recording. So the oldest one is deleted and the new one gets recorded. You don't have to do anything. That's pretty much what loop recording does. Now what it doesn't do, it doesn't erase your lock files because that's 
when your GPS sensor has locked a certain file. Now, if you need more information on loop recording, I do recommend you watch this video because it gives you a lot of information on loop recording. I'll put a link right up here for you. Like all DAS cams, this comes with G-Sensor, known as Gravity Sensor. What this does, if your car or vehicle is in a collision or it gets a shake, a shake is like a grocery cart hitting your car or somebody ramming into your car while you're parked, it will lock the current file that is viewing and it will not be erased. This is what you call a locked file. When we're going back to loop recording, when you're doing your loop recording, it's not going to overwrite that. It will not do that unless you actually format your micro SD card or you, unless you delete it from your menu. Now you can set this G sensor to low, medium or high. My recommendation is to set it on medium, go back three weeks later and review your files. If you have a lot of locked files, that means you have, you're either breaking a lot, which is called hard breaking. You got a speed bump pop holes in, in your area and all that takes uh, effect on the G sensor because that's the shake that's happening. So if you're having a lot of locked files, then you want to set this to low. Now remember, the more locked files you have, the less space it has for your loop recording. Now, if you need more information on G-Sensor, because G-Sensor and Loop Recording, they play a lot together and it, it affects how much space you have left in your micro SD card. That's why I recommend to get the maximum you can get, which this one is 128 gigabyte, which is a lot of space. And again, if you need more information on G-Sensor, I'll put a link right up here for you. Now, just like with G-Sensor, you also have Park Mode. Now, what Park Mode does is when you're not moving, your car is parked, and then if somebody backs into you, it will turn on, take a quick video, I think a 15 to 25 second video, and turn back off. Now this is only if your DAS cam is charged. The battery and the DAS cam only holds a small charge. So while you're driving, it's charging. So you're not gonna get this an hour, two hour, even a five minute charge. You'll probably get maybe a minute or less. So when you do have that cart that runs into your car or somebody backs into it, it will turn on, take that small file, record it, lock it, and it'll be there for you when you come back. Now you could also use a hard wire kit to keep your dash cam on. This is like in daytime and in nighttime. Now with this optional hard wire kit, your, your dash cam will be on even though while you're parked, say in the store, at work, if something happens, it will record that. Now what, what this hardwire kit does, when your battery reads, I think 11.6 or lower, it will stop the power to the dash cam. Now this only happens if you're pretty much parked like for two days, two or three days, it will stop and then that way you, you will not, your battery will not run out of charge. That pretty much what a hardwire kit does. Now when you have a a rear view mirror dash cam in front of your rear view mirror you have already. When you adjust it, sometimes it moves a little bit, but I think with your Velax, it pretty has some stable arms to it where it won't do that. But even though you're, you're pretty much adjusting this, this arm makes a big difference when you have it in your vehicle. It makes it a cleaner look you have no bands on the opposite side and it keeps everything confined there. So I recommend this uh, mount when you're purchasing your DAS cam. Now let's go into some installation and how to install this DAS cam. Do the screw here and this would take out the rear view mirror. The first thing you wanna do is grab your mount. You get your bracket for the rear view mirror and then you use these bolts with the screwdriver provided and you just screw them in. The only remaining screws you have left and to screw them in there. We are now ready to install the rear view mirror dash cam into the slot. The, the front dash cam. Now I'm going to install mine centered to the rear view mirror. And just make sure you clean the area first. For the GPS mount. I took off the adhesive strip. I'm going to put this higher on the window shield towards the passenger side 
where you can see I have the groove here from the center and that's where I'm going to put mine higher to the window. It's going to install it, the wire in. I'm just going to install that first. All right, got the front cam. Just push it in and twist and it'll go in perfectly where it needs to go. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start connecting the wire from the rear view mirror. And that way all the connections are done. Well, actually, no, it's not going to be done. I still got to connect the power cable here right way. So I'm just going to connect this wire here. This is the power. All right, I just want to show you how the wires look inside the headliner. Again, all you're doing is just push it in with your hand. And there's a fourth of an inch to an eighth of an inch in there. And that's all you're doing is simply pushing it inside the headliner. All right, so all we're going to do now is to run the wire between the weather strip and the A pillar. And all you're going to do is just pull this wire, this, I'm sorry, this weather strip out. Now this wire, we're simply going to put it in between the A pillar and the frame, back the weather strip. All right, I'm going to put it in there. It's installed. I'm sure it's clean, uh, but I've taken this car wash several times, so I know it's good. Uh, we're going to try to, let's see about right there. I'll the next thing we want to do is take off this liner on the back. So, all right, here we go on the inside. As you can see when before that, I have already taken a lot of the uh, poster clips off already. So that's why it's easier for me to take this off. So what you're going to do now is from the wires here, we're going to keep running the wire to the inside of the car. The rear camera wire. And it's actually just right here hanging down the side there. Again, on these ones, all you got to do is push it in and turn and eventually it'll clip, and which it did right there, and it's in. I started running the wire to the driver's side. Now what we need to do is pull some of that wire because, see, you got the slack from the the passenger side which is the front camera and you have the slack from the driver's side which is the rear camera so in order to get this slack out we're gonna have to pull the wire to the driver's side to get some slack going inside the headliner all the slack so this is pretty much the wires you're gonna have now here I'm probably gonna velcro these wires together so it's just one strand and the same thing for these two I'm going to attach these wires together where there's less wires exposed. It'll be like if there's only two. So I'm going to start that. We're to the A pillar now. Now on the other installation, we went down. But on this installation, we're going to keep going up and route the wire to the B pillar. Which that's going to be the B pillar, which is the middle between the front seat and the back seat. And then we're going to the C pillar. which is back there where the back seat is at. We're gonna continue running the wire inside the weather strip. And then from this part of the back seat, I'm gonna push it open a little bit and then run the wire to the back inside the trunk. This is where my opening is. And this wire, I'm gonna route it underneath the carpet towards the bottom. So this is where it's gonna go next. It's going to go underneath the car area. It's going to come out here. I'm going to start taping it to here. Now, before I do all that, you can see there's wire in the inside and I still have all this slack. So before I secure anything, I'm just going to run the wire straight to this part so we know how much slack to put on the inside. It's the same function. Just put it, the wire in and turn it with your hand. Everything's confined. Everything is put back. All the carpet is put back on the inside. There's no exposed wires. All right, that was a pretty quick view of it. But if you want more information on how to install this dash cam step by step, again, subscribe to this channel because this video is coming out soon. All right, let's get into some driving footage.
what you think about that driving footage? I got the daytime, I got the nighttime, I even got through a car wash just so you can see the colors of the 1296 by 1080p resolution. I hope this footage was helpful for you. Now back to the review. Now this dash cam comes with two extra filters. So if there's too much sun or too much light glaring at your dash cam, you can simply put these on. Now the other thing about this dash cam, which when you're installing it, it comes with a 33 feet uh, wire that you could connect from your, your rear view mirror all the way to your rear, your rear camera. And that cord is 33 feet. That is more than enough cord you're gonna need. Now, this will be good enough for a truck where you have to go longer, like a dual bed, and you have to go all the way through the, the tailgate up. It will be long enough for that. Now, there is an optional 49 foot cable, like your RVs or larger trailer trucks. You could actually get a cord longer for that. But the 33 foot it comes with, I, I, to me, I think it'd be more than enough cord that you'll need. With the dash cam, you can view all your files in a larger screen compared to a two inch or one inch or three inch screen. You have a 12 inch screen to view them. Now here on, on the screen, you have, you can view your files. You could do from loop recording. You could do your lock files, your photos. And here you could also delete them as well. Or you could even lock current files that you have in there that were, were not locked. Just simply just pressing the, the screen here. So to me, again, another added great feature. The menu is pretty easy to go by and to view. And also with the, when you have your menu and you have your, your manual, the manual is very detailed in here where it explains the menu. Now, if you need more information on the menu or you want to get step-by-step -step on how to use the menu, subscribe to this channel. The menu video is coming out soon. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now, this video was helpful for you Give me that thumbs up because you know, I appreciate that from you and it actually helped this channel a lot. The products will be linked in the description down below to purchase. If you have any questions or comments about this uh, video or any questions about the dash cam, leave them in the comment section down below. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and select all notifications for all upcoming videos because there's more videos of this dash cam coming out. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.